Okay. Soldiers off stage. Okay, Black bye. Boys. Yeah. yeah, guys. Good draft, Simon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. We will take the full terror and we will start oh, to teach court out here. Magnuson going down. No, doesn't even have time to flash with the death charge. First blood over to SK. I'm peeping, I'm peeping. It looks really good. Look at three. Yes, uh, we were just watching this here, and actually, I guess you were saying, wow, top was so far ahead, or? No, like Kalista was so Oh, far <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, well, congratulations. Uh, I just wanted to lead in because the Kia player of the game is irrelevant. So it was between you and him, right? Yeah. Most likely. Uh, yeah, but I think he deserves it. He plays very well. Even last bit, I think he was playing very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he's pretty much gapping every game, every top laner. So, yeah, I think he deserves it. Fair enough, you were doing well uh, as well. Uh, Lore told me to tell the people, because maybe it was an interesting story, how you decided on your haircut. Oh, so, yeah, I... I had enough of, of my normal hair, so me and my assistant coach uh, owner, we said like, either I go blonde or I go bald, no hair, and we can't flip it, uh, can't flip it before going gym, and yeah, I lost it. Now it's like I'm bald, but I regret it. Like, uh, you do? It yeah. looks great. Uh, I mean, it's yeah. not fully bald. You could still make no, it blonde. No, but it, it grew, it grew back because oh, I was that like, fast? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like that. legit an egg. But you did have a phenomenal hair, though. But anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. You <laughs> also have phenomenal hair, bad. cold work. Um, so we want to talk about the next game, the last game of the day, which is a rematch of the finals that we saw at the end of winter. GB, Mad Lions, Koi versus G2. Super exciting just by that premise itself, right? Oh, absolutely. And I think that final already delivered more than we had expected. I, at least from my point, I still thought that MDK was a strong team with a strong baseline and foundation for how young they were as a team moving into the final. But I thought they would get clear 3 out. But that didn't happen. And even the game they lost, they still played up with them. So seeing how they play after the break they've had, going up against G2 again in the best of one, anything can happen. Yeah, and they want revenge, obviously. Exa, of course, the team of the split, that was a big discussion on socials. It was all G2. Is there anyone of Mad Lions Koi that you would have put in the place of who was elected? Uh, no. You can see maybe, you. maybe Alvaro, I think he's yeah. playing well. Uh, I think Supa, for example, yesterday played very well against me, but I don't think he was playing like that next uh, last pit but maybe he improved uh, throughout the pit because we didn't play them like after week one mm -hmm. so i don't know but i think i think g2 roster is just too good on every role um what is it about alvaro that makes you say okay he might have deserved it because i think he's very good on support <laughs> i think there wasn't any very good support uh, before like uh, to match mickey i think mm -hmm. but i think this year there is uh june and alvaro i think so far so yeah Okay, well, that's we agree on that, right? Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I voted Alvaro just for the record as well. Okay. I mean, I think just Mickey, so you know, <laughs> I thought Mickey had a strong performance, but even in finals, the Nautilus at times I was like, okay, that yeah. looks like, uh, looking interesting. But I still think, but like, he is the best support in Europe. But in terms of wind, I thought Alvaro had a better winter in general. I think what makes Alvaro so good is also just the fact. Um, he's so good at applying a pressure. And I'm not just talking about, about the map. It's like, you see his Renata, he plays that champion like it's a playmaker. Like he's looking to try and mad life you with the Q. He's always trying to get ahead of you. He's always trying to apply pressure. And I think he's paired super well up with a guy like Super because Super also wants resources. Super wants to be the carry too. And he's really good at facilitating that. So he's good in lane and he's good out on the map. And I think that's just the edge he has right now and the uh, hunger. Is that also your experience? Because you played them just yesterday, right? So Yeah, uh, I mean, Super was contesting every minion on bot, which was a bit <laughs> annoying. Also because he's playing Varro, so he's like way stronger than Zeri. But yeah, I think they are in great form. I think yesterday all the teams played worse than how they play in scrims oh. because it's like first game. I think yeah. G2 is not at the form they were like in finals. Mm -hmm. I think they are. They, I think they have like one week of scrims, so they, you still need to to like get back to your form, right? So I mean, I actually don't know who will win because I think yeah, both teams are not playing at their peak, so. No, we'll I don't know, see. but maybe G2 is just a uh, mechanical gap them, so I don't That's the same choice of always, right? But I, I would like to see Mad Lions Koi take it just for kind of the storyline, Goldberg. Also, we're expecting to see some fired up team fights. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, because it is a best of one. And as you said, like, it's still maybe like a bit like scrimmaging good, a bit messy. I thought G2 still had some good map play, but even on that map play to have when they're seating tier two or sub or on top lane or anything like that, the team fight that started coming out, they take every fight almost. They want to skill check them as well. In a best of one scenario like this, we also go up against MDK who's also been very willing to do that 
that, especially on bot side with Aloya coming down, you know you're going to have to re threes. You know you're going to go up against them like that, and you know it's going to be bloody. So we'll see if the uh, picks and bans are also geared towards those team fights as we get into it. And yeah, let's see. Yesterday, G2 did play Smolder, so I think that win does not count. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the game we just had was one of the first games where Smolder was just let through completely. Uh, like no ban, no pick yeah. as well. It's gonna be a first pick Smolder, yeah. I think. Well, what else do they need to ban on, right? Oh. Because they ban Lucian Nami. Yeah. So, let's see. I'm curious to see, like, we've, we've seen a lot of Smolder first yeah, pick through like this. Yeah, is banned now. Hey, uh, fans are happy about that. <laughs> now, I mean, you can go a certain champion, I won't say, because I didn't pick it yet. No. <laughs> So Let's see if it's locked. Uh, you, there is Senna also open. You can go Oriana Rail as a combo. I don't know. Oh, I want to see it locked in now, so we know what the uh, what the OP. What do you think? What what would you play against Mulder? No, not you. Uh, Goldberg, because you don't want to. What would I? I'm not playing any ah. carry in, so that's for sure. I actually oh. thought that I would love oh. to see the Kaiser approach we've seen uh, in the LPL. Maybe. But this I is an old classic. You cannot confirm nor well. deny, but it is a Kogma. <laughs> you think it's good? I. I can't say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's say. Let's let's say in another world I might have played against this. I might have played this matchup. Yeah. Fair and enough. I might have not felt good. Uh, and so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, let, 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 we can do this. Look. Look. You, this is you know what's coming on three because this is the combo they were playing uh, in win in the last year. Exactly. Spring or what? Yeah. No. Or we had, spring. Yeah. I, well, it was last year. Let's they just do that. They were blind picking that combo on cooldown, and that's probably what. Mad is expecting on three, so now they are taking a good matchup support into the Brom. So Rakan. Yeah, I like that, because most of the time you would see like, oh, yeah, now carry and then now on two, right? And then if Brom comes through, now you can just wait for it on three. Yeah, I mean, this is most likely that was coming up, so you should take a good support into Brom. You can go Rakan, you can go Mio. Or maybe you drop support. What would you do, GB? Well, I think it's very interesting. I don't think I would blind the Brom here at all. I think, yeah, okay, if we just go for a safe one. If the CH still be enabled, I feel like, okay, you can yeah. just play one of the strong mid laners. Talia as well, it's okay, but it's like you don't really know what you're playing it into, and it's hard to reach Kokmo in the back line. So I think probably one of the safest mid laners yeah, you can also have right you now you with denied, You deny it, like the Oyan Ara combo. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, it's going to be interesting now. Like, you could go Brom like you did in the past, but and also this also have um, so much value here. Even Maybe though they flex the Kogmo as well. No it's way. Into Ana, I don't know, but yeah, most likely, okay. Kogmo Milio. It really is interesting. We've seen so much fire on him in the LPL, not just specifically with Lucian, but with any pick. We've even seen it pair up with Caitlyn. You already know the range that's coming out from a Kogmo. That's just going to be a mecha range now with the cozy campfire, too. If it's Kogmo DC. Ah! Because, I don't know, I mean, Caps was smiling. Yeah. Very, very much. <laughs> You sometimes do that. You look over when they lock in a champion. You're like, is no, that I person don't, smiling? I, if, I, if they if they are smiling, I would lose oh, okay. my confidence. <laughs> so okay. I don't look at this. Never look at a G2 player if you want to win. <laughs> but I wonder what a well, Rel's already locked in because Yike had said had tweeted yesterday it is the split of Carry Yike because he played one Lee Sin game and now he might be back on Rel. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to be. Uh, Utility. Yeah, I feel like he was just trying to manifest that. You know, he was happy yeah. to get a Lee Sin game. And uh, to be fair, though, props to him that Lee Sin game looked unplayable, but he made it work. Um, but uh, going back to uh, duty here on Rill, it makes sense when you have a carry like uh, Cogmore. You want to set him off for success, and you can't be too greedy with multiple carries in a, in a team come right. So already going with the with the Cogmore, it makes sense to grab a Rill. They, bu they buffed Kogmo. I forgot Yeah, the Kog slow on Eve. So it went from 30% on rank 1 to 40%, which is quite nice, just because it's not the ability as an AD carry that you max. But also a nice quality of life update was the fact that your Q doesn't have a channel time anymore. It oh, used yeah, to be 0.25. Speed. Now it's based off attack. Okay, so you yeah. can actually like auto queue without it feeling mega awkward, and yeah, that's something yeah. it did in the past a bit. But I don't think it's like a big, it's like a buff. That no, it's like a minor quality of life, right? Like it's not something that's gonna completely change the champion, but you know. Now they match the push on mid and the pressure with Nico, and they have team fight tall. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, if it's like equal skill, I really like Mad Draft because I feel like you have Oriana, which is very strong, you have Ivern. To match the clear speed of rail and nice team fighting and like zone control with the bushes and the, and daisy and you have smolder that wins at 25 minutes so yeah 
I think if they don't skill check on bot, it's gonna be a bit rough. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder what kind of fall process BB is looking at here. We haven't seen the best Aatroxes in the West just yet, but it's something it's we've seen slammed in. It's very good H actually. I mean, there's Aatrox, there's Nah as well. You want to reach the back line with Nico for some team fighting as well. That could be decent for top lane. I don't know what BB else has played. TS banned, Volibear's banned. Oh, that's, that's very good, I think. Because you you usually want to outrange Smolder. Because if you go like Aatrox or melee yeah. top, I think he's, you're just going to be a tool for him to queue Absolutely. your backline. So I really like Jace here. Okay, so, so does the Jace keel it over for you to G2 or do you still think Mad Lions has a better draft if the hand stiff is there for them? Mm. I mean, now I really like uh, ah. G2 draft. I think Kogma would just walk mid and just auto them in mid you. Okay, so sway to G2, what do you think, GB? Well, I think it's one of those where it doesn't feel like a complete gay a draft cap I've yeah. seen quite often. Like, both teams has very playable compositions. So this is the one where so much of it comes down to execution. And on execution level, G2 has shown to be the better team, so mm -hmm. that probably gives them an easier time playing it. All right, fair enough. Thank you both, and let's get into Grand Lines versus G2. Let's get on to Summoner's Rift for our final game of the day. Man Lions Koi taking on G2 Esports. Only two teams have won on red side so far this spring. G2 being one of them against BDS yesterday and SK earlier on. It's a blue side favored Rift, it seems here in the LEC. Mirwin, don't face check it, Mirwin. You don't need to, just hang out in that pixel bush. That's what he's gonna do, is he? Oh, oh, G2 deciding if they want to back or not. Line of scrimmage laid out by MDK. Yeah, I thought that G2 were moving up here to essentially do what we've seen for like the Twisted Fates and stuff, right? Which is try and get those deeper ward so then you can continuously harass with the Jace and start to push in the wave and make sure you're in a good spot. Um, and not let Mirwin really get into a position where he's able to contest wave state or have a safe opportunity, but not going for it instead. Maybe expecting some sort of counterplay, but I'd be kind of surprised with uh, oh. the level one that MTK have. Elioia and Milwin now stepping in. Ward placed. Looks like that's going to be all that happens. Elioia gets the ward in. Obviously, Ivan, he's clear, very much facilitated by the fact you just use your friend of the forest, set up all the buffs, and then you can uh, smite one or two as and when. Hun Summer and Mickey were covering this blue side jungle to make sure that there was no invade from MDK. So they are second to the lane, Alvaro and Super waiting. Oh, there's a stack. It's happening. Super's on his way. They'll never recover from this. No. It's over. It's two stacks well, already. Okay. Hun Summer has no stacks to the two from, uh, from Super. What an amateur. Yeah, I know, right? Mickey doing a nice job of harassing here, though. Alvaro will end up taking the headbutt, use it on hand ammo, but it means that you don't really have the pulverize to actually threaten it all in onto Mickey in this level one, which obviously would be a bit difficult, but um, does mean that Mickey just getting some nice harass down onto Alvaro. Um, as Hans is getting to attack the wave, still though, Super going to be able to hit the level two here first, which is not something that ideally happens when you're in the double range matchup. Yeah, I think it was more Alvaro and Super being in the wave already when uh, when uh, Mickey and Hans got down there, made it a lot easier for them to get that wave prior. And Alistair not really a champion until level two, although that headbutt did pay off dividends. Yike looking for this top side, could even go for an invade, but Elio has already cleared away his blue and his wolves. So and now just maybe pathing towards mid as Fescawi has fallen down to about half HP, as has Caps. A gank possibility. Yike running in. Camps with the root. There's the stun. And Fiscari will fall for first blood. G2 on the board. Nicely done there. Flash four from Caps. Manages to set up the root and then an easy pick off. So Yike even just getting that transitional gank is beautiful because yes, it cost him a flash, but like from a timing perspective, he's totally fine. He's just going to be able to clear out his bot side. Oh, still hovering in the mid lane, maybe expecting that El Yoya might try and come by. Some pings actually coming out from the G2 bot lane, I assume, saying, hey, we are all the way pushed up to our tower. El Yoya could have invaded during this time. So with the wave being in the position it was, Super now losing some health means that Mickey and Hansama could react if El Yoya steps in, which he did do a little bit, but. The blue was already being taken by Yike, and with the smite, should be able to secure it. Super and Alvo now waiting around the corner, but Yike able to get his blue. Is a camp behind. The Scuttle Crab will fall. Good knockback there with the fire kick as Hans Summer pops the ghost. Look for more of an invade. Alvaro going in. Nikki flashes the wall, and Alvaro falls. And Yoya now needs to get the hell out of here. He has the flash, but can he get out? Red buff and blue buff healing him up just a little bit. That red at least, and he does burn the flash. 
2 2 and 0 oh, with almost a thousand gold lead at four minutes and that was my biggest worry if madeline's boy tried to go for some sort of invade was just how low super was like super not really in position to really threaten aggressively in those fights because he was already sub half, half hp so han sama coming in able to threaten super off of the fight and then mickey good flash over the wall and then we're looking for the hex flash on for skewy like it's just skipped all his camps man he's done four camps yeah. so far didn't get a scuttlecraft now goes back up towards his top side, Razor Beak's the probability. The control ward did spot out Yike as he went for that second mid lane gank, but let's have another look at this bot lane play. Yeah, Super's just so incredibly low here, and you get a ton of value off of Mickey having that cozy campfire here as well. So Super already pushed out of the fight because of the position here, and then they try to turn on to Mickey, but it ends up being a flash over the wall. Then you overextend here as Alvaro to try and set that up, and the cozy campfire, giving the extra auto attacks, just means that Yike has to run for the hills. That's actually a get crazy away. good cue as well for Mickey to, to stop the combo mid-air yeah. when it was blind. You just cue the bush because someone could be in there, but perfect timing for Mickey. Kicks away the cow, and because of it, G2 get their second kill of the game. Leads in mid, jungle, top, bot, and support for G2. And it only gets worse as well, because Yike, yes, hasn't really cleared a lot of his camps, but like El Yoya, not really in the, the best of positions now because you've got advantages across the board. So say looking at Foy Grubs, opportunity to try and play up towards that if you really want to. Dragons also become a big factor for G2, although I think you have to kind of prep the waves a little bit more here off of like the bounce back in mid. Mickey even just hovering mid here to make sure the caps isn't going to be on the business end of some attention from Madeline's Koi's. Yeah, it looks like we're just going to get a swap. So El Yoya going to move up towards Void Grubs. It looks like it'd be a dragon take here for Yike. Super still has the flash here. Mickey's on his way down towards this bottom lane. Flap, flap, flap. Goes Super over the wall. Gets to safety. Wave it looks like it's actually pushing towards G2 at the moment. Hans will be pulling out a few of these minions, but it's going to be a lot of CS lost for the MDK AD carry. <laughs> Ultra Mega Fire Kick stops his recall. Mickey being a nuisance as per usual. And now G2 will invest time in pushing this way forward because then Super has to stay to catch the cannon. Otherwise, he loses out on all that golden XP. Alvaro, though, over he made, caps. Doesn't have his flash just yet, but able to keep far enough back. And I like the Madeline's Quarry trying to put some pressure on towards the mid lane to maybe look for something back. And then you can try and turn in towards Dragon with the numbers advantage. But ooh, Shockwave. Swing and a miss. It's going to be massive for Caps, who's actually changing to opinion in the mid wave. Going to try and sneak up, Yike. looks like. Oh, didn't quite get the stun onto Elioya. Alvaro over towards the bottom side of this fight. Elioya and Alvaro collapsing. Now realizing maybe we can't take this. Friscawi needs to back, so G2 will get the first Drake of the game. And I think this is a mistake. I think you should have just gone right. Can't get into position in bot lane because Super had to reset. We're not really in the position in the map in mid as well, but instead they kind of overforce in the mid lane, hoping that they're going to be able to get some sort of play onto Caps. Doesn't work out. Then they still try and contest Dragon. It means you can't get Void Grub. So not really the best of trades. And especially with Broken Blade now starting to get control over this top side. Caps also going to be able to shove in this wave and no TP back for, for Frescoey. I wouldn't be surprised to Yike to just teeter over towards those Void Grubs and try and pick them up for himself as well. Yeah, at least look for one of them. The Scuttle Crab will spot him out if he does go the conventional route can jump the wall though on that rail. Broken Blade has the wave stacked up here a little with a cannon that's going to slowly push towards Mirwin unless anyone touches it. Yeah, I towards top as well though. The last lane really left for him to look for. Every other lane losing so far. Yike is on his red right now. And Caps just resetting means I mean, we'll probably just wait here for a moment. The wave is still pushing towards Mirwin so if Broken Blade does step up a little bit too far, there is that possibility of a collapse. Mirwin running the Ghost on Kasante means no flash all out insect combination. Q3. Dodge the Intofu strikes, not quite able to connect. Root Caller though on Yikes stops his advance. Broken Blade going in onto Mirwin. The wave not in the best of spots for the G2 top laner, especially considering he has no mana. Yeah, getting the flash out from BB is pretty nice here. You're just sticking around to make sure the mirror can be a pain as they try and push in this wave. Super going to take a little bit of damage oh, on the way out. going to do a lot of work here. Living Artillery coming out as well. Alvaro looking for the engage. Flashes onto Han Summer, but one more Living Artillery will be enough. The cow goes down. How now will he fall as Broken Blade dies in the top lane? Yike and BB look for a little bit more. Broken Blade caught out. That flash influential. Influ influential. As you say, Caps looking for Frescawi. Pop Blossom catches him out. Down to about half the Tangle Barbs as well. Shockwave will bring Caps back, and Frescawi actually wins this auto attack trade. Clockwork wind up doing a lot of work for the Oriana. 
Still hands of Mickey getting some revenge for finals. There's a lot of back and forth kills in between these two V2s, but it's hands of Mickey that are coming out on top in this one. But BB getting a nice response from Mirren on that top side, getting that kill. So in the grand scheme of things, going to work out for G2 because realistically these two AD carries are going to be the focal point. But we're going to get a replay here on this top side. BB has no flash using the melee stance to try and return a lot of that mana. That's something that was very nice about the changes to Jace, but not respecting Mirren's engage. And then you're going to have the all out come through as well. Really nice stuff. And Ayoi is just kind of just here to provide the shields, a little bit of extra moral support as well, and make sure that Mirren not going to fall down when it comes to the 2v1. Just a little bit too greedy there. By the G2 top laner, wanted to get the shove into the tower, but Mirwin kept him at bay, and that's MDK's first kill of the game. They are 2,000 gold in the hole, though, right now. 600 gold lead in mid and AD carry for G2. Ginsu's Rage Blade already complete as well for Hans Summer. Expect to see, I've seen a lot of Blade of the Rune King Terminus, sometimes Jack Show on the Cogmore right now. Can also go for the Triforce in certain situations. We saw that kind of introduced as, you know, you, you queue into Triforce with the Sheen proc. I don't think we'll see it here from Han Summer, but it is a possibility. Yeah, I think um, more than likely going to go for Blade of the Rune King is, uh, next, but that's the kind of the thing. Often talk the time, a lot, awful lot of the times you see the Blade of the Rune King first because you want the sustain and being able to manage, but this is where the downside of Smolder is. You don't have a lot of threat in the lane, so you're kind of fine to go for a greedier build in a lot of these situations. Now, Yike being a bit greedy himself, starting to push in, has Mickey and Caps here, needs Han Summit to come across to guarantee they've got the numbers advantage, but they may even just look for the dive and say, screw red buff. This dragon's alone. Watch over the wall. Mom called. Can a minion still standing though for the moment? A super might be locked up in a second. Caps takes him. Han Summer did all the work and Caps reaps the rewards. There's another tower plate as well. As the G2 bot lane begins to open up, 200 gold bounty already sitting on the head of the Cogmore. The Melio obviously mitigating some of that healing loss from not going the Blade of the Ruin King versus for Skawi. Now caught Pop Blossom will catch him towards the side as well. Daisy doing everything, everything she can to even out the playing field as Yike can just jump across this wall in a second. But with Mickey on the way, Cozy can fire enough to heal up. Yike Alvaro gets oh. in, but the Ultra Mega Fire Kick stops him in his tracks. Cap splashing the wall, looking for Fescawi. Can't quite get enough damage down to take him out, but Mickey has been on point with those cues to stop Alvaro joining the battle. Big time, and the fact that you actually end up winning out on that skirmish that could have gone so disastrously is massive for G2. You got a 1.2k gold lead in bot, a 1.3k gold lead in mid. G2 are taking these skirmishes so incredibly well, and turning on to Frescoe here, like, you're kind of just running out of damage, unfortunately, for Caps, where he just doesn't have enough uh, cooldown reduction. The flash away from Frescoe on towards the Q means that he's going to be fine as well, and then this is where it gets dangerous for Yike, but Mickey quicker on their own, the shield, the cozy campfire heal, and then this interrupt as well is perfect. Because it means Yike just barely able to survive. And again, that shield into another shield with the ignite ticking is just so well for Yike. And even uh, that's one of the rare moments I've seen Dylan Falco react yeah. to something. Usually he's <laughs> stone faced as Yike looks for the engage here. Magnet Storm not quite off cooldown yet, I don't believe. Should be up soon. G2 though aren't going to make the same mistake that Mad did earlier on. They'll back away. They accept that they can't fight this Drake. They didn't have prior in mid. And it looks like Han Summer wanted to back away as well. Has finished that Ginsu's, but we're sitting on a lot of gold as well. Managed to pick up another plate in the bot lane since then. And uh, gets the Berserker Greaves for himself. And now will waddle his way back towards the bot lane. Yeah, look, at this stage, it's looking a bit disastrous for, for Mad Lion's Koi. You've already got a massive gold lead on towards this Kogma, who's going to be a menace as he gets the later portion of the games. Not even just the fact you have Mickey, who's going to be able to support him and keep him safe from a lot of the lockup that might come through from, say, like El Yoya. But even then, there's not a, back, a lot of backline threat to be realistic. And with uh, the control you have in mid for Caps as well, it's just going to get more and more difficult for Preskemi to try and take the 1v1, opening up Caps to try and go for some of these more creative plays on the map as well. So it does get very difficult. Mirwin. He goes back in, but Hans Summer has reinforcements. Mirwin with the all out. Magnus Storm unstoppable with the path maker. Hans Summer falling low, but Mirwin falling lower. And Hans Summer goes on a killing spree. You can see what was in the mind of Mirwin. Thought he could take the 1v1, and he definitely could have. But unfortunately for him, G2 reinforcements arrived too quickly. Yeah, I mean, this is basically going to be the most pampered dog you've ever seen by the end of this. <laughs> There's always going to be the helicopter parents hovering around to make sure that he's. Got his nails trimmed, going to be fed, well fed, and even at this stage as well, picking up more turret plates on this top side, plus he got the Void Grubs that are going to be there that he's picking up as well, like, 
again, G2 very much controlling this early game here. And by doing so, controlling Super and his stacks as well. Super at 77 stacks right now. Nowhere near where you want to be on the Smolder at this point. Of course, if the game does go on, Smolder eventually will get to 225. But it is so delayed. And when we get towards those next team fights, Super's going to be nowhere near his power breakpoint. Yeah, especially with how quickly Han Sam is starting to reach his, right? Like, you're already going to reset it. Go, oh, sorry, has just reset nearly towards the Blade of the Rune King as well. You just end up in a position where once you get to three items on this Kog'Maw, you just become an absolute monster. And again, we kind of talked about it already. Like, Alvaro is main backline threat with Mirwin, and if one of them can get onto him, okay, cool, maybe Frascoe can ult, but Frascoe isn't in the best spots either, so the actual opportunities to pick off Han Sammer are just going to be so difficult, unless you are coming in from multiple different angles and just causing G2 so many different issues. Because if you only have one flank, all that happens is Yike and Caps then engage on the rest of your team yeah. when someone dives onto your backline as well. Mickey can definitely keep Han Sammer safe against an Alistar, or even against Mirwin, we've seen that already, so... It's going to be so hard for MDK to actually find any avenue to approach a fight. And Summer now two and a half, uh, one and a half items. Super trying to do everything he can, and I wonder how MDK will fight back from this position. Alioya sneaking in, stealing away some camps. He's got Moonstone, so Super will be buffed up as well. Has an, a pocket enchanter in the form of this Ivern. But uh, and Summer has a few more tools in his toolkit right now. Mickey stepping in, flat, flat, flat from Super over the wall. Hans Summer gets. The cozy campfire. Frescare steals away that remnant blue buff as Caps is losing here to Mirwin. Dashes away with the rocket belt, but Mirwin's still on the chase. That Iceborne Gauntlet doing work in Toku Strikes brings the pull back, but not enough damage to force Caps back to the fountain. We'll just cause him to reset. So I guess he did force him back to the fountain, just not as quickly as perhaps he would have liked. Big win, because Madeline's Coyer trying to set up for a dive onto this bot tier one. And with Mirwin now winning the top lane, it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, look, Yes, G2 are matching our play on bot side, but we are just going to win on the top half of the map. Caps does stop his reset, though, um, trying to make sure that he can I catch that TB wave. Back. Oh, sorry, TP back, was it? Yeah. Um, and I think this is where you're in a position now that if you're Madeline's Koi, fantastic. If you're able to win out in this 1v1 against the ca against Caps, well, now you get to create pressure points in the map that G2 can't really contest with at the moment. I wonder if uh, Broken Blade will start matching against Mirwin again. At the moment, it's Fiskawi going down towards the bottom side. Broken Blade going into the relative fog of war of his own jungle, although he will be spotted by a ward. Four and a half thousand, the gold lead for G2. They still have that Rift held in pocket as well. They want to try and crack this mid lane tier one, but still caps and Mirwin battling out towards the top lane. Yank on his way up there as well. Mickey and Hans Summer walking their way up through the river. You can see pings coming out from MDK. They know. There's a, a very strong contingent of G2 players on this top side. And they know Broken Blade doesn't have TP, whereas Triskawi does. So if they can find a fight, they have the opportunity of making it an outnumbered battle. G2 do have to be careful about trying to make those migrations up and down river, though, because if you end up in a position where Mirwin was able to collapse from the top end and you've got Alvaro who's coming in from one angle, that's kind of what Madeline's quite want. Um, Super. Yeah, going to be able to clear out the wave nice and easy. But uh, yeah, you just have to be somewhat careful when you come to this. Six seconds, though, on towards Dragon. G2 have already completed their journey south and will be able to pick up the Dragon for themselves. A far side alteration in the blue bit pit. It looks like one, but if that's an actual ward, there is an opportunity for Mirwin to TP in behind. It is a far side alteration. So can't TP to that. Dragon secured by G2. Their second of the game. MDK did stop the stacking earlier on, so Mirwin stays up towards the top side. It's Broken Blade going up to answer him in both the mid laners down towards the bottom lane. I would say Cloud Soul, though, for uh, Han Sama. Yeah, it's going to be a bit annoying. Or, <laughs> also, <laughs> for Caps. True. <laughs> it's, it's quite nice. Even for you, know, all of them obviously is beneficial, but uh, it's uh, pretty deadly in the hands of G2. Cloud Soul, very powerful. I think underestimated because it used to be feel like one of the weaker souls, but now it's in a, a very strong position. Movement speed, one of the most overlooked uh, attributes that you can have in League of Legends. Just makes you so much stronger than your opposition, especially at this level where it's all about those micro movements, those little sidesteps, those little jukes, getting to the play first as Super gets to these Razor Beaks first. Trying to get some of these for his Q stacks at 136 right now. Still about 100 away from where he would like to be. Caps looking for the engage, doesn't quite land on Super. There's the stun from Alvaro, but he's going to have to back away because G2 are 
overloading this mid lane. They're not using the Rift Herald as of yet. Feels like they really want to hold on to that one, but still that mid lane tier one stands for MDK. So they are forcing G2 onto the back foot ever so slightly, or at least delaying what G2 want to do. Yeah, I like Madeline's card just trying to match G2 on the macro side of things, and it's working out relatively well for them where they're just trying to transition across and again, use the pressure point that is Mirwin. And they're making G2 work for it, right? You've got the push now on top side, which is why Madeline's quite feel comfortable to just take a bit of a nose in towards the top side jungle to see what fish control they can get down, let Mirwin play that little bit aggressive. But it's also trying to open up an avenue for Mirwin where he can just try and collapse across. Like if you guarantee that there is no vision here, as soon as Mirwin dips into Fog of War like this, it becomes a lot more difficult for G2 to be able to put pressure into the mid lane or contest you on the mid wave. And again, that just opens up more room for MDK. But, Perhaps uh, it's just the least yeah, subtle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, oh, I wonder if this minion was actually able to come from that bush. Perhaps walks in, super has to back away. The rest of his team were on a reset, so he respects it. Rifto now charging up towards the top side. Um, it's not going to make its way anywhere near the tower, but eventually may get there as Broker Blade is pushing out that wave. So tower in the mid lane falls. G2 finally get the prize they've had their eyes on for the last couple of minutes, and it's at two and a half minutes before the next dragon. Rift Herald now working her way through this lane, but with Mirwin here, I don't think it will get a charge. Mirwin's underneath the tower already. Depends how safe he wants to play. He does have a bit of vision control around him, so knows that he is not being collapsed on, at least by the majority of G2. So G2 starting to move in. I think the big one that you're looking at is to see, okay, can we try and get to like a another item break point for Super before we really have to fight? Because if you can get towards like Spear Shojin as well, you're in a good spot, but G2 don't really want to let him get there. Super needed to flash that. The Magnus Storm comes out. Super's locked up. Yeah, okay. Okay, Super. That was greedy not to flash early. The thing is, like, if you if you do flash, Yike can hold his and wait yeah. because it's just flash Q, but I really feel that Super, after he used the flap, flap, flap and realized that uh, Yike was getting in range, should have just burnt the flash. And now G2 could start up this Baron. They have good smite secure with the Shadowing Strike into smite from Yike. Hans Summer will shred through it pretty quickly as well with Ginsu's Blade of the Ruin King. TP into the mid lane by Broken Blade. Caps resetting. He can te teleport in as well. But G2 don't have as much vision around here as they would like. In fact, they have none apart from that control ward in the mid lane bush. That's where Caps is going to TP. Mickey falling low. Cozy campfire going out as Mirwin keeps Yike up towards the top side of the battle. Pulls him back with the Intokus. Rascari and Alvaro force up away from the fight. And now the collapse beginning from the rest of G2. Mirwin pops the ghost, has no flash, and is now on the wrong side of the rift. For any more battles with his teammates, G2 will collapse on him. Mirwin just trying to clear out the wave. Locked up by G2, and it's 8-1 the score. Yeah, and just nice little picks come through for G2. They get super, now they get Mirwin, which nets them top terror. And this is where it's going to start to get difficult. 45 seconds until Dragon, you immediately get top terror reset here for G2 and go for it. But actually, oh, might have caught Mickey. Root Transition. Caller going down. Alvaro going in as well with the Root Caller, and Mom is there for the kill. Super gets it with his ultimate. Importantly, like, G2 did burn double teleport to make that Baron play happen. They're dragging up in two, uh, 25 seconds or so. And with Mickey getting caught out, MDK have a bit of a window as Super flashes forward and just shuts down Hans Summer. Now Hans Summer has a little bit more movement speed in the Acadian Surprise. Won't be able to get the counter kill. Broken Blade trading on the top side with Yike here. But Alvaro's on his way and the TP comes in. And now G2 are the ones outnumbered. And MDK have roared into life. Broken Blade fourth down towards the bottom. Yike trading with Mirwin. Yike should fall in that battle. Broken Blade should go down as well as Alvaro and Elioia slowly work their way through him. Yike tries to dash away. Mirwin still on the chase with the path maker, but doesn't have the Q3. There it is. Locks him up, and Mirwin takes it. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Super flapping his way away from Kaos. Can he dodge? He can't. Kaos takes him out. It's so messy all over the place. Nice job from Super. Again, Spear Shoujin Essence Reaver is such a big buff for Super on the smolder. Aimed to find the kill onto Han Sam underneath the tower when he was low, but on the top side, you lose that members of G2, then Kaos is able to bring it back. So. It's a bit all over the place, but a bit of an even Steven. All said and done, like Frascari trying to stop the backs in thinking, hey, look, we can try and get this dragon if we uh, hold on. But it means that he's in a terrible position, but redemption, the shields from Frascari coming through from both items, his own E, then Ilyoya with the shields, being able to reposition as well. Alvaro just standing in front of a lot of people, blocking the damage that Phoebe is trying to churn out. And then Mirwin having that TP to follow up here as well. Super important for Madeline's Koi to be able to finger, fin finish members off. But then in the mid lane, Super sticking around that little bit too long. And Caps wasn't even hidden. He's just able to chase him down with the speed up he gets off his W. 
And then the Hextech Protobelt just closing the distance as well. We need to see the start of that fight. Maybe Caps was a minion or something, a little bit deceptive for Super, but yep, Super just getting caught out again. Did have a great play in the mid lane, though, to kill off Han Summer, who is two and a half items. The same for Super. That goal lead, still a thousand, but nowhere near as consequential as it was a few moments ago. G2 in the picture in picture took the dragon, their second cloud of the game. Super now at 206 stacks. And we are only 19 away from that execute threshold being met. Alvaro going for this control ward has the cosmic opposition. So relatively tanky on the cow. Mini window will clear it out. Top side control gained for MDK. This is just again kind of a, a bit of a waiting game until objectives, right? Because on MDK side, they're like, hey, look, if we can maybe fish for a couple of picks, cool. But realistically, we just want Super to stack as much as possible, getting very, very close to that 2 2 5. But on the opposite side for Hansame, if he ends up finishing off this Ruin's Hurricane, he becomes a menace in a team fight with the amount of AoE damage that he's going to be able to do. So I think both teams kind of happy to handshake the slower pace at the moment. Yeah, we're probably two waves away from Super hitting the threshold. He needs uh, 13 more stacks. Uh, steal away a jungle camp or something, or if we have a cannon wave coming in, which we should. Getting over towards the 25 minute mark. Caps takes the tower in the bot lane. It's G2's third of the game. And still their gold lead around four and a half to 5,000 depending on the ebb and flow of the lanes. There's the Runans complete for Han Summer. He's got an Ardent Sensor as well. He has a Knight's Vow. There's an Abyssal Mask on Yike. Like, Yike and Mickey are just pure utility, pure support in this game. Obviously, the engage from Yike can be very powerful in the fight, and you know Mickey has tools in his toolkit as well, but most of the time, it's about buffing Han Summer and Caps. I think the interesting part of how G2 operate is going to be who's marking who, right? Because it's kind of like a Caps can mark Say Mirwin maybe, or can try and mark Alvaro, and then Yike try and marks the other person, right? To make sure that there's always someone keeping track of where these members are. And this was something that we kind of looked a lot for, like say a team like JDG at Worlds, which was why they were so good, is how good they were at marking the multi multiple different attack angles. But we have to see Caps with the team if he wants to try and mark someone, because right now it's just Yike, and he doesn't fancy those odds. So just gonna hop his way out from under the terror. But I think that's why Madeline's Koi feeling a little bit more confident, because if it is just Yike, that they're trying to deal with, it becomes a bit easier for them to try and bypass some of the front line that G2 have. Caps pushing in that bot wave. Mirwin is going to answer it. Super over the threshold now, 227. I'll we'll stop talking about the stacks for a little while until he gets to some ludicrous number, like 500. But uh, it is where Smolder really comes online. Rapid fire cannon as well for him, enhancing the range of that possible execute. It's two minutes before the cloud soul for G2 if they were to secure the next dragon. For the moment, it looks like lane assignments are just Caps going bot, Broken Blade going top, Hansama, Yike, and Mickey acting as the mid lane defense for this tier one. I still think it's just a case of the waiting game, unfortunately. I thought this was <laughs> going to be way more of a banger. I thought this we, was we be had a really explosive, like, two minutes, yeah, yeah, and yeah, then yeah, everything's yeah. kind of calmed down again. Daisy used in the mid lane here. That tower has backdoor oh, defenses and the TP behind as Caps will look for this. Has that pop blossom? Yeah, Yike looking for the engage as well as Mirwin's on the front line. The Scowie force off towards the top side of the fight. And Summer has a wall between him. Caps. Alvaro can just collapse on him, but Caps flashes away. The flap, flap, flap as well means Super's out of the fight. Ayoi has the redemption to heal him up for Scowie on the back line, but Mirwin there as well. Caps falling lower, but Super can't quite get the final bit of damage down. And Summer knocked into the middle of the team. But there's the Magnus Storm, and now Super has to deal with the Cogmo on his face, and he just can't do it. But Scowie will fall afterwards. And what a perfect fight from G2. MDK threw everything they could at it, the kitchen sink to boot, but at G2 in the end, come out all five players alive. Both teams trying desperately to get onto the enemy AD carry, but with his dying breath, Alvaro thought maybe he'd secured it, but Yike, just like an angel over the wings of Han Sama, keeping him safe, and now just like that, game's it's over. just over. G2 just roared through the base, ripped through it, and straight down the mid lane, they will look for the Nexus. Alvaro and Adioyo trying to defend, but they can't do anything against all five members of G2, who go 2-0 and o on the week. And Sam and Mickey, the fact that they got that early lead over Super and Alvaro was massive in this game. The Kogma coming on significantly earlier than you would have expected with the five kills that he picked up coming in towards the end of that game. And then from that point on, G2 just kind of knew as soon as we get some sort of team fight, we're going to be so incredibly strong and perhaps the TP in just closing out nicely.
a lot of credit to Mickey as well. That early game, the Ultra Mega Fire Kicks yeah. really changed the landscape of the fight because he was almost dead the first time, manages to flash over. The second time we see Yike almost dying, but he manages to get away as well because of Mickey landing those couple of kicks. And that, sometimes that's all it takes to change an early game. A couple of kills over to MDK. It really was like a cattle prod. It's yeah. like, it's not something that does an awful lot of damage, but it's just enough to keep yeah, just the cattle bay. Yeah, just keep moving, just keep moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can vote for your Kia player of the games at LEC on X. Yike, Caps, and Hunt Summer are your options. Justice for supports, guys. <laughs> Mickey, Mickey kind of deserved, you know, a, an honourable mention, at least, for that yeah, game. Everyone else played well as well, like all credit to them. I think Broken Blade was the only one that had a more uh, sombre performance on the day. And I think as well, though, like, yes, I think G2 played exceptionally well, but I also do want to take a look at Mad Lions play, because I think this is, again, a team that surprised a lot of people to the fact that they made it to finals, but also played this game incredibly well. Yeah, they like, did. they slowed the pace of the game down. They were trying to find ways to trade off on the map against G2, and I, I think it does, again, speak volumes to this team, the fact that they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with so many different aspects that G2 have been trying to perfect for so long. Yeah. Like, this was a close, close game, and did end up just coming down to one or two different mistakes, and it could have gone uh, MDK's way. Yeah, I very much agree with you. I think MDK continues to go from strength to strength after we yeah. saw them in the finals. They continue to look like a team that will be battling near the top of spring. The question is whether they can maintain this form, whether teams will start to find them out, because that's always the question when you have a team full of people that have, you know, built up this synergy outside of the LEC. However, I think that's it from us for now. Thank you very much for watching me and Dagda. We're going to hand it over to Law, who is standing by with Romain. It's Romain. Sacré bleu! C'est Romain, it's Romain. Actually, it's been a long time, Romain. Coucou. Merci beaucoup. Coucou. How are you doing? Really good. A really win good. is a win. I'm happy. Um, yeah, we just we were looking forward for this uh, yeah. day uh, as a little uh, rematch from uh, the end of winter. I know. And we got them, so I'm proud of the boys. Do you think they made, not your boys, but Mad Lions Code, do you think they made progress since finals and since you beat them? Um, they couldn't show it today, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I think so. All right. Well, we'll see if you guys face each other later in the split. I want to talk about G2 in general, how you guys refined your approach since last year as a coaching staff, for instance, because you guys won everything. We know how Worlds went. We won't talk about this. Hopefully, MSI does not happen again. But how did you, as a coaching staff, refine the approach you had to be ready this year and not commit the same mistakes? Um, we kept the same five players, uh, so we needed to change something. We added an extra staff member, which is Duff, uh, and he's helping us a lot to challenge our process, refine our process. Mm -hmm. we, we had to explain how we work to him, which helps us to think twice about why we're doing things. So I think it was a great addition, and we're happy with winter. We want to win spring to be the strongest EU team arriving to MSI, coming to MSI. Romain, usually I ask coaches how do they think their player progress. Now I'm going to ask the general manager how you think the coaching staff is progressing. And especially Dylan, who's been working in the industry for almost a decade now, I think. What makes him different as a coach compared to when you started working with him? Um, I think we, we're trying to write down the book on how to win League of Legends. and. We're going deeper and deeper, right? So chapter after chapter and keeping the same coaching staff and the same player for a second year allows us to go to so much detail into some specific point that I'm, I'm really happy. I see the progress and it's going to be a good year. When you see players who've been playing for years, they have a hard time second guessing themselves and maybe refining their approach and maybe think differently. Would you say that it's something that you feel in coaches maybe as well? For sure, yeah. like motivation and day-to-day -day awareness of what you're doing is for every human, right? So it's a big part of our job together to challenge ourselves from the staff perspective, but also to challenge the players. And we have a really good relationship between us, so it helps, for sure. Last question, when we had the opening teaser of the season, you guys said, and Cap said especially, people are going to try to catch up on us now. We have to stay ahead of the curve. We have to prevent people from basically beating us. On the philosophical approach, how are you making sure as a staff that players stay on their toes, stay focused, and don't get ahead of themselves in that approach? We share a conscious uh, trauma, uh, which is uh, the different loss we had during Worlds uh, last year. Uh, and we're not going to throw everything. We are giving 100% for every single game. The goal is not anymore to win Worlds. The goal is to win every single step. Uh, of the way, uh, which it's the same, but it changes a bit the mindset. Well, as a European fan, I'm relieved to hear this. Roman, thank you so much. We have Mickey and Duffman waiting on the other side in PGL with shocks. Do you have a question for them? Um, boys, do you believe you were the winning reason behind G2 2019? Oh, 
I love this, Romain. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. And Shox, back to you. And I want to hear the answer here. Ah. Yeah, waiting for the tune, but I 